So you have joined OpenStreetMap, spent a year of five mapping and starting to think that uh, you begin to understand the project, how it works. Well, I'm Elias Verev. I have been trying to understand OpenStreetMap for like nine years, <laughs> writing news, writing code, writing you know, event invitations, and I'm prepared to dispel everything you think you know about OpenStreetMap, starting with basics like data model. You come to OpenStreetMap and the data model looks very simple, just nodes, weights, relations, and tags. Looks much more simpler than simple features by OGC. But uh, then you start using it, start uh, uh, making complex edits, and you find out that everything is connected. It's actually a topological model. Uh, as file, it's one big single XML file and it requires a lot of memory to process. So data simplicity of the data model uh, looks not that good. It's not that simple. And we always say, the map is free. Come, switch to OpenStreetMap. Uh, go away from these commercial providers. But again, <laughs> uh, when you start using it, if you need map data for something, uh, more complex than just a base map, then you need some custom development, then you need to understand how OpenStreetMap works, how its data model works. And uh, you need to hire some people who do that or spend a lot of time getting to know OpenStreetMap and getting to know it wrongly and making a lot of errors in process. So the final amount of money you spend on it may be even higher than if you just buy commercial services. Or the thing, uh, humanitarian team and others uh, use the fact that you press save button and your edits are immediately in the database. And that's cool, just a few minutes pass and your data is uh, on the map layer. But how much time passes until other people can see your edits? Uh, people don't use OpenStreetMap.org. They use uh, Mapsme or Garmin's. And uh, these uh, da that data is updated like once a a few weeks or even a month. And people use Facebook and other apps with Mapbox maps. And Mapbox has very long validation process so your edits again may not appear for another month. So it's not like the data is immediately available to all the people. Uh, licensing question is the greatest one because nobody understands licenses. Like uh, this map, it's on osm.org and you think you know it, uh, it's OpenStreetMap, so it must be ODBO. And that is not right. Uh, database data is indeed ODBO, but uh, when you sign up, uh, you are told that individual contributions inside it are actually under DBCL. And map style, like selection of features that are displayed that are, that are not, is another thing to be licensed. Uh, it's also copyrighted. Uh, there was issue with open map tiles using Mapbox uh, selection of features and layers. Uh, for OpenStreetMap Carto, uh, licenses are put into brackets, but for different mapping styles, there will be different licenses. So visual style, colors, uh, widths, uh, icons, that's also separate uh, artwork that is copyrighted. Map tiles themselves on OpenStreetMap work as CC by SA, it's not to the BA. So it, it's a different. Thing. And there are always terms of use. So it's not like you can take the tiles and use it in, for example, Pokemon Go application. Uh, then tagging. Uh, we have very long map features page and another one, uh, how to map. So there are a lot of documentation on tags and you might think that at least on basic things we're all agreed upon. But uh, Take forests, for example. How do you map them? Natural wood or land use forest? Nobody knows. And the same with highway classification and a lot of other stuff. So tagging is not fixed in stone and there's always unsolvable questions when you tag things. And when you go out surveying and you see many shops that uh, just do not fall into categories outlined in Wiki and you need new tag, do you write a proposal for a new tag or how do you invent, invent it? Uh, so most things in OpenStreetMap, most tagging schemes didn't pass through proposal process, like simple 3D buildings. So these are two separate things, inventing new tags and using, using them 
and uh, fighting with the community on tech proposals. These are not connected. Uh, we say that anybody can map, uh, just go to a website, press the edit button, uh, and uh, you're all set, just to map your neighborhood or something. Uh, but there are many uh, unseen biases in our data, many obstacles that we don't even see. For example, our project is very English language centric. Our tags are in English. All of the documentation, most of the documentation, okay, in, in English. All the major discussions, all the main channels are all English only. So if you don't know English, I have no idea how people who don't know English even participate in the project. Uh, events. Uh, there's a great idea. Mapping parties must be great for community. New people come and they walk around and they get to know the map and they continue to map. Uh, after that. But in time, I found out that the same people visit uh, all the mapping parties and conferences, so the community doesn't grow a lot. And uh, a mapper from Belgium, I used, I think, uh, he did a research that uh, with numbers show, uh, showed that, yeah, the community doesn't grow from mapping parties. Uh, increases one or two persons a year, so this doesn't matter, but they are very fun, so still do participate in making parties. Uh, tracing imagery is the main way of entering data into OpenStreetMap now, but is it always good? And people tell that it isn't. For example, in remote areas, uh, the thing with imagery is it is always wrong. It is outdated, it is misaligned, uh, and uh, when you map something, then mapping something from scratch is much easier than fixing the data. So when you trace remote imagery, uh, then in some uh, area, then some local community appears, and it will be much harder to, for them to start editing because they will have to fix everything you have mapped before. And finally, you might think that uh, everything you do in OpenStreetMap matter, that your edits uh, might help somebody, and this one is actually true. <laughs> uh, things uh, that you map in OpenStreetMap, uh, th that you develop things, that you spend your time getting to know, to connect with other members' community, is what keeps OpenStreetMap alive. So at least for this, thank you, and thank you for keeping OpenStreetMap action.